Exodus. Chapter 1. Now these are the names of the sons of Israel who came to Egypt with Jacob their father, each man with his household, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher. All the souls who came out of Jacob's body were seventy-five, and Joseph was in Egypt already. Joseph died, as did all his brothers, and all that generation. The children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it happen that when any war breaks out, they also join themselves to our enemies, and fight against us, and escape out of the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. They built storage cities for Pharaoh, Bithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and the more they spread out. And the Egyptians were in dread of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians ruthlessly made the children of Israel labor, and they made their lives bitter with hard labor, in mortar and in brick, and in all manner of labor in the field, all their labors which they ruthlessly made them do. The king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of whom the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other Boa, and he said, When you perform the duty of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, then you shall kill him, but if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God, and did not do what the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the baby boys alive. The king of Egypt called for the midwives, and said to them, Why have you done this thing, and have saved the boys alive? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women aren't like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous, and give birth before the midwife comes to them. God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied, and grew very mighty. It happened, because the midwives feared God, that he gave them families. Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, You are to cast every son who is born to the Hebrews into the river, but every daughter you are to keep alive. Chapter 2 A man of the house of Levi went and took a daughter of Levi as his wife. The woman conceived, and bore a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. When she could no longer hide him, she took a box made of reeds for him, and coated it with tar and with pitch. She put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. His sister stood far off, to see what would be done to him. Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe at the river. Her maidens walked along by the riverside. She saw the basket among the reeds, and sent her handmaid to get it. She opened it, and saw the child, and look, the baby cried. And she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Should I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. The maiden went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away, and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. The woman took the child, and nursed it. The child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, and said, Because I drew him out of the water. It happened in those days, when Moses had grown up, that he went out to his brothers, and looked at their burdens. He saw an Egyptian striking a Hebrew, one of his brothers. He looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no one, he killed the Egyptian, and hit him in the sand. He went out the second day, and look, two men of the Hebrews were fighting with each other. He said to him who did the wrong, Why do you strike your fellow? He said, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you plan to kill me, as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? Moses was afraid, and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh, and lived in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters. They came and drew water, and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. The shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them, and drew water for them, and watered their flock. When they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that you have returned so early today? They said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and moreover he drew water for us, and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, Where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him 
that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses Zipporah his daughter in marriage. She bore a son, and he named him Gershom, for he said, I have lived as a foreigner in a foreign land. It happened in the course of those many days, that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed because of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the children of Israel, and God was concerned about them. Chapter 3 Now Moses was keeping the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the wilderness, and came to God's mountain, to Horeb. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and look, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Moses said, I will turn aside now, and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses. He said, Here I am. He said, Do not come close. Take your sandals off of your feet, for the place you are standing on is holy ground. Moreover he said, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who were in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now, look, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. Moreover I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come now therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said to God, Who am I, that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And God spoke to Moses, saying, Certainly I will be with you. This will be the token to you, that I have sent you, when you have brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. And Moses said to God, Look, when I come to the children of Israel, and tell them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What should I tell them? And God said to Moses, I am that I am, and he said, You shall tell the children of Israel this, I am has sent me to you. And God said moreover to Moses, You shall tell the children of Israel this, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is how I am to be remembered from generation to generation. Go and gather the elders of the children of Israel together, and tell them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Egypt, and I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, to a land flowing with milk and honey. They will listen to your voice, and you shall come, you and the elders of Israel, to the king of Egypt, and you shall tell him, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Now please let us go three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to our God. I know that the king of Egypt won't give you permission to go, except by a mighty hand. I will put forth my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders which I will do in its midst, and after that he will let you go. I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it will happen that when you go, you shall not go empty-handed. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor, and of her who visits her house, articles of silver and articles of gold, and clothing, and you shall put them on your sons, and on your daughters. So you shall plunder the Egyptians. Chapter 4 Moses answered, But, look, they will not believe me, nor listen to my voice, for they will say, God has not appeared to you. The Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, A rod. He said, Throw it on the ground. He threw it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses ran away from it. The Lord said to Moses, Put forth your hand, and take it by the tail. He put forth his hand, and laid hold of it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, 
has appeared to you. The Lord said furthermore to him, Now put your hand inside your cloak. He put his hand inside his cloak, and when he took it out, look, his hand was leprous, as white as snow. He said, Put your hand inside your cloak again. He put his hand inside his cloak again, and when he took it out of his cloak, look, it had turned again as his other flesh. It will happen, if they will neither believe you nor listen to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. It will happen, if they will not believe even these two signs, neither listen to your voice, that you shall take of the water of the river, and pour it on the dry land. The water which you take out of the river will become blood on the dry land. Moses said to the Lord, Please, Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before now, nor since you have spoken to your servant, for I am slow of speech, and of a slow tongue. The Lord said to him, Who made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, and teach you what you shall speak. He said, Oh, Lord, please send someone else. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, What about Aaron, your brother, the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Also, look, he comes forth to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You shall speak to him, and put the words in his mouth. I will be with your mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what you shall do. He will be your spokesman to the people, and it will happen, that he will be to you a mouth, and you will be to him as God. You shall take this rod in your hand, with which you shall do the signs. Moses went and returned to Jethro his father-in-law, and said to him, Please let me go and return to my brothers who are in Egypt, and see whether they are still alive. Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. The Lord said to Moses in Midian, Go, return into Egypt, for all the men who sought your life are dead. Moses took his wife and his sons, and set them on a donkey, and he returned to the land of Egypt. Moses took God's rod in his hand. The Lord said to Moses, When you go back into Egypt, see that you do before Pharaoh all the wonders which I have put in your hand, but I will harden his heart and he will not let the people go. You shall tell Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son my firstborn, and I have said to you, let my son go, that he may serve me, and you have refused to let him go. Look, I will kill your son, your firstborn. It happened on the way at a lodging place, that the Lord met him and wanted to kill him. Then Zipporah took a flynn, and cut off the foreskin of her son, and cast it at his feet, and she said, surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me. So he let him alone. Then she said, you are a bridegroom of blood, because of the circumcision. The Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. He went, and met him on God's mountain, and kissed him. Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord with which he had sent him, and all the signs with which he had instructed him. Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. Aaron spoke all the words which God had spoken to Moses, and did the signs in the sight of the people. The people believed, and when they heard that God had visited the children of Israel, and that he had seen their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Chapter 5 Afterward Moses and Aaron came, and said to Pharaoh, This is what the Lord, God of Israel, says, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should listen to his voice to let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and moreover I will not let Israel go. They said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us, please let us go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to our God, lest he fall on us with pestilence, or with the sword. The king of Egypt said to them, Why do you, Moses and Aaron, take the people from their work? Get back to your burdens. Pharaoh said, Look, the people of the land are now many, and you make them rest from their burdens. The same day Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people, and their officers, saying, You shall no longer give the people straw to make brick, as before. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. The number of the bricks, which they made before, you require from them. You shall not diminish anything of it, for they are idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let heavier work be laid on the men, so they may labor at it and pay no attention to lying words. The taskmasters of the people went out, and their officers, and they spoke to the people, saying, This is what Pharaoh says, I will not give you straw. Go yourselves, get straw where you can find it, for nothing of your work shall be diminished. 
So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather dry stalks for straw. The taskmasters kept pressing them, saying, Fulfill your work quota, your daily amount, as when there was straw. The officers of the children of Israel, whom Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten, and demanded, Why haven't you fulfilled your quota both yesterday and today, in making brick as before? Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried to Pharaoh, saying, Why do you deal this way with your servants? No straw is given to your servants, and they tell us, Make brick. And look, your servants are beaten, but the fault is in your own people. But he said, You are idle, you are idle. Therefore you say, Let us go and sacrifice to God. Go therefore now, and work, for no straw shall be given to you, yet you shall deliver the same number of bricks. The officers of the children of Israel saw that they were in trouble, when it was said, You shall not diminish anything from your daily quota of bricks. They met Moses and Aaron, who stood in the way, as they came forth from Pharaoh, and they said to them, May God look at you, and judge, because you have made us a stench to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of his servants, to put a sword in their hand to kill us. Moses returned to the Lord, and said, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? Why is it that you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought trouble on this people, neither have you delivered your people at all. Chapter 6 The Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh, for by a strong hand he shall let them go, and by a strong hand he shall drive them out of his land. Then God spoke to Moses, and said to him, I am the Lord. And I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai but I did not make myself known to them by my name the Lord. And I have also established my covenant with them, to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their sojournings, in which they were foreigners. Moreover I have heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore tell the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments, and I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. Moses spoke so to the children of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses for anguish of spirit, and for cruel bondage. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Go in. Speak to Pharaoh king of Egypt, that he let the children of Israel go out of his land. Moses spoke before the Lord, saying, Look, the children of Israel haven't listened to me. How then shall Pharaoh listen to me, who am of uncircumcised lips? The Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, and gave them a command to the children of Israel, and to Pharaoh king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. These are the heads of their fathers' houses. The sons of Reuben the firstborn of Israel, Hanok and Palu, Hezron, and Carmi, these are the families of Reuben. The sons of Simeon, Jemuel, and Shimon, and Ohad, and Jacob, and Zohar, and Shaul the son of a Canaanite woman, these are the families of Simeon. These are the names of the sons of Levi according to their generations, Gershon, and Kohath, and Merari, and the years of the life of Levi were 137 years. The sons of Gershon, Libni and Shimei, according to their families, the sons of Kohath, Amram, and Ezar, and Hebron, and Uziel, and the years of the life of Kohath were 133 years. The sons of Merari, Mali and Mushi. These are the families of the Levites according to their generations. Amram took Jochebed his father's sister to himself as wife, and she bore him Aaron and Moses, and the years of the life of Amram were 137 years. The sons of Ezar, Korah, and Nephag, and Zitri. The sons of Uziel, Mishael, and Elzaphan, and Sithri. Aaron took Elisheba, the daughter of Aminadab, the sister of Nashon, as his wife, and she bore him Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Edomar. The sons of Korah, Asir, and Elkanah, and Abiasov, these are the families of the Korahites. Eleazar Aaron's son took one of the daughters of Pudiel as his wife, and she bore him Phineas. These are the heads of ancestral houses of the Levites according to their families. These are the Aaron and Moses to whom God said, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their regiments. These are those who spoke to Pharaoh king of Egypt, 
to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are that Moses and Aaron. It happened on the day when the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, that the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I am the Lord, speak to Pharaoh king of Egypt all that I speak to you. Moses said before the Lord, Look, I am of uncircumcised lips, and how shall Pharaoh listen to me? Chapter 7 The Lord said to Moses, Look, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron your brother shall speak to Pharaoh, that he let the children of Israel go out of his land. I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh will not listen to you, and I will lay my hand on Egypt, and bring forth my regiments, my people the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I stretch forth my hand on Egypt, and bring out the children of Israel from among them. Moses and Aaron did so. As the Lord commanded them, so they did. Moses was eighty years old, and Aaron eighty-three years old, when they spoke to Pharaoh. The Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Perform a miracle. Then you shall tell Aaron, Take your rod, and cast it down before Pharaoh, that it become a serpent. Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did so, as the Lord had commanded, and Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called for the wise men and the sorcerers. They also, the magicians of Egypt, did in like manner with their secret arts. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them, as the Lord had spoken. The Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning. Look, he goes out to the water, and you shall stand by the river's bank to meet him, and the rod which was turned to a serpent you shall take in your hand. You shall tell him, The Lord, God of the Hebrews, has sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness, and look, until now you haven't listened. Thus says the Lord, in this you shall know that I am the Lord. Look, I will strike with the rod that is in my hand on the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. The fish that are in the river shall die, and the river shall become foul, and the Egyptians shall loathe to drink water from the river. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, Take your rod, and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their rivers, over their streams, and over their pools, and over all their ponds of water that they may become blood, and there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. Moses and Aaron did so, as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod, and struck the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. The fish that were in the river died, and the river became foul, and the Egyptians couldn't drink water from the river, and the blood was throughout all the land of Egypt. The magicians of Egypt did in like manner with their secret hearts, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them, as the Lord had spoken. Pharaoh turned and went into his house, neither did he lay even this to heart. All the Egyptians dug around the river for water to drink, for they couldn't drink of the water of the river. Seven days were fulfilled, after the Lord had struck the river. Chapter 8 The Lord spoke to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, and tell him, This is what the Lord says, let my people go, that they may serve me. If you refuse to let them go, look, I will plague all your borders with frogs, and the river shall swarm with frogs, which shall go up and come into your house, and into your bedchamber, and on your bed, and into the house of your servants, and on your people, and into your ovens, and into your kneading troughs, and the frogs shall come up both on you, and on your people, and on all your servants. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron your brother, Stretch forth your hand with your rod over the rivers, over the streams, and over the pools, and cause frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up, and covered the land of Egypt. The magicians did in like manner with their secret arts, and brought up frogs on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron, and said, Pray to the Lord, that he take away the frogs from me, and from my people, and I will let the people go that they may sacrifice to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, I give you the honor of setting the time that I should pray for you, and for your servants, and for your people, that the frogs be destroyed from you and your houses, and remain in the river only. He said, 
tomorrow. He said, Be it according to your word, that you may know that there is none like the Lord our God. The frogs shall depart from you, and from your houses, and from your servants, and from your people. They shall remain in the river only. Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried to the Lord concerning the frogs which he had brought on Pharaoh. The Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the courts, and out of the fields. They gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was a respite, he hardened his heart, and did not listen to them, as the Lord had spoken. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your rod, and strike the dust of the earth, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. They did so, and Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, and struck the dust of the earth, and there were lice on man, and on animal, all the dust of the earth became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. The magicians tried with their secret arts to bring forth lice, but they couldn't. There were lice on man, and on animal. Then the magicians said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them, as the Lord had spoken. The Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, Look, he comes forth to the water, and tell him, This is what the Lord says, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if you will not let my people go, look, I will send swarms of flies on you, and on your servants, and on your people, and into your houses, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon they are. I will set apart in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, to the end you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. I will put a division between my people and your people, by tomorrow shall this sign be. The Lord did so, and there came grievous swarms of flies into the house of Pharaoh, and into his servants' houses, and in all the land of Egypt the land was corrupted by reason of the swarms of flies. Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron, and said, Go, sacrifice to your God in the land. Moses said, It isn't appropriate to do so, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Look, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes? and won't they stone us? We will go three days journey into the wilderness, and sacrifice to the Lord our God, as he shall command us. Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only you shall not go very far away, pray for me. Moses said, Look, I go out from you, and I will pray to God that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people, tomorrow. Only do not let Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. Moses went out from Pharaoh, and prayed to the God. The Lord did according to the word of Moses, and he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. There remained not one. Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also, and he did not let the people go. Chapter 9 Then the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, and tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go, and hold them still, look, the hand of the Lord is on your livestock which are in the field, on the horses, on the donkeys, on the camels, on the herds, and on the flocks with a very grievous pestilence. The Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that belongs to the children of Israel. God appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. The Lord did that thing on the next day, and all the livestock of Egypt died, but of the livestock of the children of Israel, not one died. Pharaoh sent, and, look, there was not so much as one of the livestock of Israel dead. But the heart of Pharaoh was stubborn, and he did not let the people go. The Lord said to Moses and to Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it toward the sky in the sight of Pharaoh. It shall become small dust over all the land of Egypt, and shall be a boil breaking forth with boils on man and on animal, throughout all the land of Egypt. They took ashes of the furnace, and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it up toward the sky, and it became a boil breaking forth with boils on man and on animal. The magicians couldn't stand before Moses because of the boils for the boils were on the magicians, and on all the Egyptians. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he did not listen to them, as the Lord had spoken to Moses. The Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and tell him, This is what the Lord, 
The God of the Hebrews, says, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For this time I will send all my plagues against your heart, against your officials, and against your people, that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I would have put forth my hand, and struck you and your people with pestilence, and you would have been cut off from the earth, but indeed for this purpose I have raised you up, to show you my power, and that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth, as you still exalt yourself against my people, that you won't let them go. Look, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as has not been in Egypt since the day it was founded even until now. Now therefore command that all of your livestock and all that you have in the field be brought into shelter. Every man and animal that is found in the field, and isn't brought home, the hail shall come down on them, and they shall die. Those who feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made their servants and their livestock flee into the houses, whoever did not regard the word of the Lord left his servants and his livestock in the field. The Lord said to Moses, Stretch forth your hand toward the sky, that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt on man, and on animal, and on every plant of the field, throughout the land of Egypt. Moses stretched forth his rod toward the heavens, and the Lord sent thunder, and hail, and fire fell to the earth. The Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. So there was very severe hail, and fire mixed with the hail, such as had not been in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. The hail struck throughout all the land of Egypt all that was in the field, both man and animal, and the hail struck every plant of the field and broke every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. Pharaoh sent, and called for Moses and Aaron, and said to them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. Pray to the Lord, for there has been enough of God's thunder and hail and fire. I will let you go, and you shall stay no longer. Moses said to him, As soon as I have gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands to the Lord. The thunders shall cease, neither shall there be any more hail, that you may know that the earth is the Lord's, but as for you and your servants, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord God. The flax and the barley were struck, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was in bloom. But the wheat and the spelt were not struck, for they are late. Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh, and spread abroad his hands to the Lord, and the thunders and hail ceased, and the rain no longer poured on the land. When Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more, and hardened his heart, he and his servants. The heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the children of Israel go, just as the Lord had spoken through Moses. Chapter 10 The Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart, and the heart of his servants, that I may show these my signs in the midst of them, and that you may tell in the hearing of your son, and of your son's son, what things I have done to Egypt and my signs which I have done among them, that you may know that I am the Lord. Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and said to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Or else, if you refuse to let my people go, look, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your country, and they shall cover the surface of the earth, so that one won't be able to see the earth. They shall eat the residue of that which has escaped, which remains to you from the hail, and shall eat every tree which grows for you out of the field. Your houses shall be filled, and the houses of all your servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, as neither your fathers nor your father's fathers have seen, since the day that they were on the earth to this day. He turned, and went out from Pharaoh. Pharaoh's servants said to him, How long will this man be a snare to us? Let the men go, that they may serve their God. Do you not yet know that Egypt is destroyed? Moses and Aaron were brought again to Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go, serve your God, but who are those who will go? Moses said, We will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds will we go, for we must hold a feast to the Lord. He said to them, The Lord be with you if I will let you go with your little ones. See, evil is clearly before your faces. Not so. Go now you who are men and serve God, for that is what you desire. They were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. The Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come up on the land of Egypt and eat every plant of the land, even all that the hail has left. Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind on the land all the day, and all the night, and when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. The locusts went up over all the land of Egypt 
and rested in all the borders of Egypt. They were very grievous. Before them there were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. For they covered the surface of the whole earth, so that the land was destroyed, and they ate every plant of the land, and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. There remained nothing green, either tree or plant of the field, through all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God, and against you. Now therefore please forgive my sin again, and pray to the Lord your God, that he may also take away from me this death. He went out from Pharaoh, and prayed to God. The Lord turned an exceeding strong west wind, which took up the locusts, and drove them into the sea of Suf. There remained not one locust in all the borders of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the children of Israel go. The Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. Moses stretched forth his hand toward the sky, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, neither did anyone rise from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Then Pharaoh called to Moses and to Aaron and said, Go, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds stay behind. Let your little ones also go with you. Moses said, You must also give into our hand sacrifices and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our livestock must also go with us, not a hoof is left behind, for of it we must take to serve the Lord our God, and we do not know with what we must serve the Lord, until we come there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he wouldn't let them go. Pharaoh said to him, Get away from me. Make sure you never see my face again, for in the day you see my face you shall die. Moses said, You have spoken well I will not see your face again. Chapter 11 The Lord said to Moses, Yet one plague more will I bring on Pharaoh, and on Egypt, afterwards he will let you go. When he lets you go, he will surely thrust you out altogether. Speak now in the hearing of the people, and let them ask every man of his neighbor, and every woman of her neighbor, articles of silver and articles of gold, and clothing. The Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. And Moses said, This is what the Lord says, About midnight I will go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the female servant who is behind the mill and all the firstborn of livestock. There shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there has not been, nor shall be any more. But against any of the children of Israel the dog won't even bark or move its tongue, against man or animal, that you may know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. All these your servants shall come down to me, and bow down themselves to me, saying, Get out, with all the people who follow you, and after that I will go out. He went out from Pharaoh in hot anger. The Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh won't listen to you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the children of Israel go out of his land. Chapter 12 The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be to you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household, and if the household is too little for a lamb, then he and his neighbor next to his house shall take one according to the number of the souls, according to what everyone can eat you shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male a year old. You shall take it from the sheep, or from the goats and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at evening. They shall take some of the blood, and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel, on the houses in which they shall eat it. They shall eat the flesh in that night, roasted with fire, and unleavened bread. They shall eat it with bitter herbs. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted with fire, with its head, its legs and its inner parts. You shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, but that which remains of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. This is how you shall eat it, with your waist girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste, it is the Lord's Passover. For I will go through the land of Egypt in that night, 
and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and animal. Against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments, I am the Lord. The blood shall be to you for a token on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and there shall no plague be on you to destroy you, when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be to you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord, throughout your generations you shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, even the first day you shall put away yeast out of your houses, for whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. In the first day there shall be to you a holy convocation, and in the seventh day a holy convocation, no manner of work shall be done in them, except that which every man must eat that only may be done by you. You shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this same day have I brought your regiments out of the land of Egypt, therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations by an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread, until the twenty-first day of the month at evening. Seven days shall there be no yeast found in your houses, for whoever eats that which is leavened, that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel whether he be a foreigner, or one who is born in the land. You shall eat nothing leavened. In all your habitations you shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel, and said to them, Draw out, and take lambs according to your families, and kill the Passover. You shall take a bunch of hyssop, and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the lintel, and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door, and will not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. You shall observe this thing for an ordinance to you and to your sons forever. It shall happen when you have come to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he has promised, that you shall keep this service. It will happen, when your children ask you, What do you mean by this service? That you shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he struck the Egyptians, and spared our houses. The people bowed their heads and worshipped. The children of Israel went and did so, as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. It happened at midnight, that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of livestock. Pharaoh rose up in the night, he, and all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. 31 He called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise up, get out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord, as you have said. 32 Take both your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and be gone, and bless me also. 33 The Egyptians were urgent with the people, to send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We are all dead men. 34 The people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes on their shoulders. 35 The children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they asked of the Egyptians articles of silver, and articles of gold, and clothing. 36 The Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they let them have what they asked. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. 37 The children of Israel traveled from Ramesses to Succoth, about 600,000 on foot who were men, besides children. 38 A mixed multitude went up also with them, with flocks, herds, and even very much livestock. 39 They baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it wasn't leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt, and couldn't wait neither had they prepared for themselves any food. 40 Now the time of the dwelling of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. 41 It happened at the end of 430 years, even the same day it happened, that all the regiments of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. 42 It is a night to be much observed to the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord, to be much observed of all the children of Israel throughout their generations. 43 The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no foreigner eat of it. 44 But every man's servant who is bought for money, when you have circumcised him, then shall he eat of it. 45 A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat of it. 46 In one house shall it be eaten, you shall not carry forth anything of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall you break a bone of it. 
47 All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. 48 When a stranger shall live as a foreigner with you, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as one who is born in the land, but no uncircumcised person shall eat of it. 49 One law shall be to him who is born at home, and to the stranger who lives as a foreigner among you. 50 All the children of Israel did so. As the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. 51 It happened the same day, that the Lord brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their regiments. Chapter 13 The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Sanctify to me all of the firstborn, whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of animal. It is mine. Moses said to the people, Remember this day, in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. No leavened bread shall be eaten. This day you go forth in the month of Abib. It shall be, when the Lord your God shall bring you into the land of the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Amorite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, which he swore to your fathers to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, that you shall keep this service in this month. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten throughout the seven days, and no leavened bread shall be seen with you neither shall there be yeast seen with you, in all your borders. You shall tell your son in that day, saying, It is because of that which the Lord did for me when I came forth out of Egypt. It shall be for a sign to you on your hand, and for a memorial between your eyes, that the law of the Lord may be in your mouth, for with a strong hand the Lord has brought you out of Egypt. You shall therefore keep this ordinance in its season from year to year. It shall be, when the Lord your God shall bring you into the land of the Canaanite, as he swore to you and to your fathers, and shall give it to you, that you shall set apart to the Lord all that opens the womb, and every firstborn which you have that comes from an animal. The males shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, and if you will not redeem it, then you shall break its neck, and you shall redeem all the firstborn of man among your sons. It shall be, when your son asks you in time to come, saying, What is this? That you shall tell him, by strength of hand the Lord brought us out from Egypt, from the house of bondage, and it happened, when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man, and the firstborn of animal. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all that opens the womb, being males, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. It shall be for a sign on your hand, and for symbols between your eyes, for by strength of hand the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. It happened. When Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near, for God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war, and they return to Egypt, but God led the people around by the way of the wilderness by the sea of Suf, and the children of Israel went up in five, divisions, out of the land of Egypt. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had made the children of Israel swear, saying, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones away from here with you. They took their journey from Succoth, and camped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness. God went before them by day in a pillar of cloud, to lead them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire, to give them light, that they might go by day and by night, the pillar of cloud by day, and the pillar of fire by night, did not depart from before the people. Chapter 14 The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn back and camp before Pihaaroth, between Migdal and the sea, before baal Zephon. You shall camp opposite it by the sea. Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will follow after them, and I will get honor over Pharaoh, and over all his armies, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. They did so. It was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was changed towards the people, and they said, What is this we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? He made ready his chariot, and took his army with him, and he took six hundred chosen chariots, and all the chariots of Egypt, and captains over all of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out triumphantly. The Egyptians pursued after them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them encamping by the sea, beside Pihaaroth, before Baal Zephon. When Pharaoh drew near, 
the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and look, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they were very afraid. The children of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you treated us this way, to bring us forth out of Egypt? Isn't this the word that we spoke to you in Egypt, saying, Leave us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it were better for us to serve the Egyptians, than that we should die in the wilderness. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still, and see the salvation of God, which he will work for you today, for the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall never, ever see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall be still. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Speak to the children of Israel, that they go forward. Lift up your rod, and stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go into the midst of the sea on dry ground. And as for me, look, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall go in after them, and I will get myself honor over Pharaoh, and over all his armies, over his chariots, and over his horsemen. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten myself honor over Pharaoh, over his chariots, and over his horsemen. The angel of God, who went before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from before them, and stood behind them. It came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel, and there was the cloud in the darkness, yet it gave light by night. So the one did not come near the other all night. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all the night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand, and on their left. The Egyptians pursued, and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. It happened in the morning watch, that the Lord looked out on the Egyptian army through the pillar of fire and of cloud, and confused the Egyptian army. He bound their chariot wheels, so that they drove them with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, Let's flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. The Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come again on the Egyptians, on their chariots, and on their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it. The Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The waters returned, and covered the chariots and the horsemen even all Pharaoh's army that went in after them into the sea. There remained not so much as one of them, but the children of Israel walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand, and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work which the Lord did to the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and they believed in God, and in his servant Moses. Chapter 15 then Moses and the children of Israel sang a song to God, and said, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father is God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. He has cast Pharaoh's chariots and his army into the sea. His choice officers were sunk in the sea of Suf the deeps cover them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, Lord, dashes the enemy in pieces. In the greatness of your excellency, you overthrow those who rise up against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumes them as stubble. With the blast of your nostrils, the waters were piled up. The flood stood upright as a heap. The deeps were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be satisfied on them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind. The sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand. The earth swallowed them. You, in your loving kindness, have led the people that you have redeemed. You have guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. The peoples have heard. They tremble. Pangs have taken hold on the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom were dismayed. Trembling takes hold of the leaders of Moab. 
All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror and dread falls on them. By the greatness of your arm they are as still as a stone until your people pass over, Lord, until the people pass over who you have purchased. You shall bring them in, and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, the place, Lord, which you have made for yourself to dwell in, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. For the horses of Pharaoh went in with his chariots and with his horsemen into the sea, and the Lord brought back the waters of the sea on them. But the children of Israel walked on dry land in the midst of the sea. Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dances. Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Moses led Israel onward from the sea of Suf, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness, and found no water. When they came to Marah, they couldn't drink from the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore its name was called Marah. The people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Then he cried to the Lord. The Lord showed him a tree, and he threw it into the waters, and the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them, and he said, If you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his eyes, and will pay attention to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you, which I have put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. They came to Elam, where there were twelve springs of water, and seventy palm trees, and they camped there by the waters. Chapter 16 They took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron in the wilderness, and the children of Israel said to them, We wish that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots, when we ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness, to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord to Moses, Look, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law, or not. It shall come to pass on the sixth day, that they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Moses and Aaron said to all the children of Israel, At evening, then you shall know that the Lord has brought you out from the land of Egypt, and in the morning, then you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your murmurings against God. Who are we, that you murmur against us? Moses said, Now the Lord shall give you meat to eat in the evening, and in the morning bread to satisfy you because the Lord hears your murmurings which you murmur against him. And who are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against God. Moses said to Aaron, Tell all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before God, for he has heard your murmurings. It happened, as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and look, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At evening you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. It happened at evening that quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay around the camp. When the dew that lay had gone, look, on the surface of the wilderness was a small round thing, small as the frost on the ground. When the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded, gather of it everyone according to his eating, an omer ahead, according to the number of your persons, you shall take it, every man for those who are in his tent. The children of Israel did so, and gathered some more, some less. When they measured it with an omer, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. Moses said to them, let no one leave of it until the morning. Notwithstanding they did not listen to Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms, and became foul, and Moses was angry with them. They gathered it morning by morning, everyone according to his eating. When the sun grew hot, it melted. It happened that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one, and all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses. He said to them, This is that which the Lord has spoken. Tomorrow is a solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. 
bake that which you want to bake, and boil that which you want to boil, and all that remains over lay up for yourselves to be kept until the morning. They laid it up until the morning, as Moses asked, and it did not become foul, neither was there any worm in it. Moses said, Eat that today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you shall not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath. In it there shall be none. It happened on the seventh day, that some of the people went out to gather, and they found none. The Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? Look, because the Lord has given you the Sabbath, therefore he gives you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Everyone stay in his place. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel called its name manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and its taste was like wafers with honey. Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded, let an omer full of it be kept throughout your generations, that they may see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar, and put an omer full of manna in it, and place it before God, to be kept throughout your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony, to be kept. The children of Israel ate the manna forty years, until they came to an inhabited land. They ate the manna until they came to the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an Omer is the tenth part of an ephah. Chapter 17 All the congregation of the children of Israel traveled from the wilderness of Sin, by their journeys, according to the Lord's commandment, and camped in Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses, and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? The people were thirsty for water there, and the people murmured against Moses, and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt, to kill us, our children, and our livestock with thirst? Moses cried to the Lord, saying, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Walk on before the people, and take the elders of Israel with you, and take the rod in your hand with which you struck the Nile, and go. Look, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb. You shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the name of the place Massah, and Meribah, because the children of Israel quarreled, and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us, or not? Then Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose men for us, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with God's rod in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had told him, and fought with Amalek, and Moses, Aaron, and her went up to the top of the hill. It happened, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed, and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone, and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and her held up his hands, the one on the one side, and the other on the other side. His hands were steady until sunset. Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The Lord said to Moses, Write this for a memorial on a scroll, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under the sky. Moses built an altar, and called its name the Lord our banner. He said, a hand upon the throne of the Lord. The Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Chapter 18 Now Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses, and for Israel his people, how that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, received Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her away, and her two sons. The name of one son was Gershom, for Moses said, I have lived as a foreigner in a foreign land. The name of the other was Eliezer, for he said, My father's God was my help and delivered me from Pharaoh's sword. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife to Moses into the wilderness where he was camped, at the mountain of God. And one said to Moses, Look, Jethro, your father-in-law, has come to you, with your wife and her two sons with her. Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, and bowed and kissed him. They asked each other of their welfare, and they came into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardships that had come on them on the way, and how the Lord delivered them. Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel, 
in that he had delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord, who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods because of the thing in which they dealt arrogantly against them. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God. Aaron came with all of the elders of Israel, to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. It happened on the next day, that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood around Moses from the morning to the evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that you do for the people? Why do you sit alone, and all the people stand around you from morning to evening? Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come to me, and I judge between a man and his neighbor, and I make them know the statutes of God, and his laws. Moses' father-in-law said to him, The thing that you do is not good. You will surely wear away, both you, and this people that is with you, for the thing is too heavy for you. You are not able to perform it yourself alone. Listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel, and God be with you. You represent the people before God, and bring the causes to God. You shall teach them the statutes and the laws, and shall show them the way in which they must walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover you shall provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating unjust gain, and place such over them, to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Let them judge the people at all times. It shall be that every great matter they shall bring to you, but every small matter they shall judge themselves. So shall it be easier for you, and they shall share the load with you. If you will do this thing, and God commands you so, then you will be able to endure, and all of these people also will go to their place in peace. So Moses listened to the voice of his father-in-law, and did all that he had said. Moses chose able men out of all Israel, and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. They judged the people at all times. They brought the hard causes to Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. Chapter 19 In the third month after the children of Israel had gone forth out of the land of Egypt, on that same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. When they had departed from Rephidim, and had come to the wilderness of Sinai, they camped in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mountain. Moses went up to God, and God called to him out of the mountain, saying, This is what you shall tell the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession from among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Moses came and called for the elders of the people, and set before them all these words which God commanded him. All the people answered together, and said, All that God has spoken we will do. Moses reported the words of the people to God. The Lord said to Moses, Look, I come to you in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you, and may also believe you forever. Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, Go to the people, and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their garments, and be ready against the third day, for on the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people on Mount Sinai. You shall set bounds to the people all around, saying, Be careful that you do not go up onto the mountain, or touch its border. Whoever touches the mountain shall be surely put to death. No hand shall touch him, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through, whether it is animal or man, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds long, they shall come up to the mountain. Moses went down from the mountain to the people, and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. He said to the people, Be ready by the third day. Do not have sexual relations with a woman. It happened on the third day, when it was morning, that there were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud on the mountain, and the sound of an exceedingly loud trumpet, and all the people who were in the camp trembled. Moses led the people out of the camp to meet God and they stood at the lower part of the mountain. And Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because God descended on it in fire, and its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. When the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him by a voice. 
The Lord came down on Mount Sinai, to the top of the mountain. The Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. God said to Moses, Go down, warn the people, lest they break through to God to look, and many of them perish. Let the priests also, who come near to God, sanctify themselves, or the Lord will break out against them. Moses said to God, The people can't come up to Mount Sinai, for you warned us, saying, Set bounds around the mountain, and sanctify it. The Lord said to him, Go down and you shall bring Aaron up with you, but do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to God, or he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people, and told them. Chapter 20 God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Do not have other gods before me. Do not make for yourselves an idol, nor any image of anything that is in the heavens above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, you must not bow yourself down to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, on the third and on the fourth, generation, of those who hate me, and showing loving kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days you may labor, and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You must not do any work in it, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your livestock, nor your stranger who is within your gates, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the seventh day, and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that it may be well with you, that your days may be long in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony against your neighbor. Do not covet your neighbor's house. Do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. All the people perceive the thunderings, the lightnings, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. When the people saw it, they trembled, and stayed at a distance. They said to Moses, Speak with us yourself, and we will listen, but do not let God speak with us, lest we die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, that you won't sin. The people stayed at a distance, and Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. The Lord said to Moses, This is what you shall tell the children of Israel, You yourselves have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall most certainly not make alongside of me gods of silver, or gods of gold for yourselves. You shall make an altar of earth for me, and shall sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your cattle. In every place where I record my name I will come to you and I will bless you. If you make me an altar of stone, you shall not build it of cut stones, for if you lift up your tool on it, you have polluted it. Neither shall you go up by steps to my altar, that your nakedness may not be exposed to it. Chapter 21 Now these are the ordinances which you shall set before them. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he shall serve six years and in the seventh he shall go out free without paying anything. If he comes in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he is married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. But if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children. I will not go out free, then his master shall bring him to God, and shall bring him to the door or to the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. If a man sells his daughter to be a female servant, she shall not go out as the male servants do. If she doesn't please her master, who has married her to himself, then he shall let her be redeemed. He shall have no right to sell her to a foreign people, seeing he has dealt deceitfully with her. If he marries her to a son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. If he takes another wife to himself, he shall not diminish her food, her clothing, and her marital rights. If he doesn't do these three things for her, she may go free without paying any money. One who strikes a man so that he dies shall surely be put to death, but not if it is unintentional, but God allows it to happen, then I will appoint you a place where he shall flee. If a man schemes and comes presumptuously on his neighbor to kill him, 
you shall take him from my altar, that he may die. Anyone who attacks his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. Anyone who kidnaps someone and sells him, or if he is found in his possession, he shall surely be put to death. Anyone who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. If men quarrel and one strikes the other with a stone, or with his fist, and he doesn't die, but is confined to bed, if he rises again and walks around with his staff, then he who struck him shall be cleared, only he shall pay for the loss of his time, and shall provide for his healing until he is thoroughly healed. If a man strikes his servant or is made with a rod, and he dies under his hand, he shall surely be punished. Notwithstanding, if he gets up after a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his property. If men fight and strike a pregnant woman so that her child is born prematurely, but there is no injury, he shall be surely fined as much as the woman as husband demands and the judges allow. But if there is injury, then you must take life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, and bruise for bruise. If a man strikes his servant's eye, or his maid's eye, and destroys it, he shall let him go free for his eye's sake. If he strikes out his male servant's tooth, or his female servant's tooth, he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake. If a bull gores a man or a woman to death, the bull shall surely be stoned, and its flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the bull shall not be held responsible. But if the bull had a habit of goring in the past, and it has been testified to its owner, and he has not kept it in, but it has killed a man or a woman, the bull shall be stoned, and its owner shall also be put to death. If a ransom is laid on him, then he shall give for the redemption of his life whatever is laid on him. Whether it has gored a son or has gored a daughter, according to this judgment it shall be done to him. If the bull gores a male servant or a female servant, thirty shekels of silver shall be given to their master, and the ox shall be stoned. If a man opens a pit, or if a man digs a pit and doesn't cover it, and a bull or a donkey falls into it, the owner of the pit shall make it good. He shall give money to its owner, and the dead animal shall be his. If one man's bull injures another's, so that it dies, then they shall sell the live bull, and divide its price, and they shall also divide the dead animal. Or if it is known that the bull was in the habit of goring in the past, and its owner has not kept it in, he shall surely pay bull for bull, and the dead animal shall be his own. Chapter 22 If a man steals an ox or a sheep, and kills it, or sells it, he shall pay five oxen for an ox, and four sheep for a sheep. If the thief is found breaking in, and is struck so that he dies, there shall be no guilt of bloodshed for him. If the sun has risen on him, there shall be guilt of bloodshed for him, he shall make restitution. If he has nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the stolen property is found in his hand alive, whether it is ox, donkey, or sheep, he shall pay double. If a man causes a field or a vineyard to be eaten, and lets his animal loose, and it grazes in another man's field, he shall make restitution from his own field according to his produce, and if he shall have grazed over the whole field, he shall make restitution from the best of his own field, and from the best of his own vineyard. If fire breaks out, and catches in thorns so that the shocks of grain, or the standing grain, or the field are consumed, he who kindled the fire shall surely make restitution. If a man delivers to his neighbor money or stuff to keep, and it is stolen out of the man's house, if the thief is found, he shall pay double. If the thief isn't found, then the master of the house shall come near to God, to find out if he hasn't put his hand to his neighbor's goods. For every matter of trespass, whether it be for ox, for donkey, for sheep, for clothing, or for any kind of lost thing, about which one says, This is mine, the cause of both parties shall come before God. He whom God condemns shall pay double to his neighbor. If a man delivers to his neighbor a donkey, an ox, a sheep, or any animal to keep, and it dies or is injured, or driven away, no man seeing it, the oath of God shall be between them both, whether he hasn't put his hand to his neighbor's goods, and its owner shall accept it, and he shall not make restitution. But if it is stolen from him, he shall make restitution to its owner. If it is torn in pieces, let him bring it for evidence. He shall not make good that which was torn. If a man borrows anything of his neighbor's, and it is injured, or dies, its owner not being with it, he shall surely make restitution. If its owner is with it, he shall not make it good. If it is a lease thing, it came for its lease. If a man entices a virgin who isn't pledged to be married, and lies with her, he shall surely pay a dowry for her to be his wife. If her father utterly refuses to give her to him, 
he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. You shall not allow a sorceress to live. Whoever has sex with an animal shall surely be put to death. He who sacrifices to another god, except to the Lord only, shall be utterly destroyed. You shall not wrong a foreigner, neither shall you oppress him, for you are foreigners in the land of Egypt. You shall not take advantage of any widow or fatherless child. If you take advantage of them at all, and they cry at all to me, I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath will grow hot, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. If you lend money to any of my people with you who is poor, you shall not be to him as a creditor, neither shall you charge him interest. If you take your neighbor's garment as collateral, you shall restore it to him before the sun goes down, for that is his only covering, it is his garment for his skin. What would he sleep in? It will happen, when he cries to me, that I will hear, for I am gracious. You shall not blaspheme God, nor curse a ruler of your people. You shall not delay to offer from your harvest and from the outflow of your presses. You shall give the firstborn of your sons to me. You shall do likewise with your cattle and with your sheep. Seven days it shall be with its mother, then on the eighth day you shall give it to me. You shall be holy men to me, therefore you shall not eat any flesh that is torn by animals in the field. You shall cast it to the dogs. Chapter 23 You shall not spread a false report. Do not join your hand with the wicked to be an unjust witness. You shall not follow a crowd to do evil, neither shall you testify in court to side with the multitude to pervert justice, neither shall you favor a poor man in his cause. If you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, you shall surely bring it back to him again. If you see the donkey of him who hates you fallen down under his burden, do not leave him, you shall surely help him with it. You shall not deny justice to your poor people in their lawsuits. Keep far from a false charge, and do not kill the innocent and righteous, for I will not justify the wicked. You shall take no bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of those who have sight and perverts the words of the righteous. You shall not oppress a foreigner, for you know the heart of a foreigner, seeing you are foreigners in the land of Egypt. For six years you shall sow your land, and shall gather in its increase, but the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie fallow, that the poor of your people may eat, and what they leave the animal of the field shall eat. In like manner you shall deal with your vineyard and with your olive grove. Six days you shall do your work, and on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your donkey may have rest, and the son of your handmaid, and the alien may be refreshed. Be careful to do all things that I have said to you, and do not invoke the name of other gods, neither let them be heard out of your mouth. You shall observe a feast to me three times a year. You shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, as I commanded you at the time appointed in the month Abib, for in it you came out from Egypt, and no one shall appear before me empty. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of your labors, which you sow in the field, and the feast of harvest, at the end of the year, when you gather in your labors out of the field. Three times in the year all your males shall appear before the Lord God. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, neither shall the fat of my feast remain all night until the morning. The first of the first fruits of your ground you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. Look, I send an angel before you, to keep you by the way, and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Pay attention to him, and listen to his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your disobedience, for my name is in him. But if you indeed listen to his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. For my angel shall go before you, and bring you into the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Canaanite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, and I will cut them off. You shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor follow their practices, but you shall utterly overthrow them and demolish their pillars. You shall serve the Lord your God, and I will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from your midst. No one will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my terror before you, and will confuse all the people to whom you come, and I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. I will send the hornet before you, which will drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite, from before you. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate, and the animals of the field multiply against you. Little by little I will drive them out from before you until you have increased and inherit the land. I will set your border from the Sea of Suf even to the Sea of the Philistines, and from the wilderness to the river, 
for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and you shall drive them out before you. You shall make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me, for if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. Chapter 24 He said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you, and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship from a distance. Moses alone shall come near to God, but they shall not come near, neither shall the people go up with him. Moses came and told the people all the words of God, and all the ordinances, and all the people answered with one voice, and said, All the words which the Lord has spoken will we do. Moses wrote all the words of the Lord, and rose up early in the morning, and built an altar under the mountain, and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the children of Israel, who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of cattle to God. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. He took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has spoken will we do, and be obedient. Moses took the blood, and sprinkled it on the people, and said, This is the blood of the covenant, which God has commanded you concerning all these words. Then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up. They saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was like a paved work of sapphire stone, like the skies for clearness. He did not lay his hand on the nobles of the children of Israel. They saw God, and ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain, and stay here, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commands that I have written, that you may teach them. Moses rose up with Joshua, his servant, and Moses went up onto God's mountain. He said to the elders, Wait here for us, until we come again to you. Look, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever is involved in a dispute can go to them. Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of God settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. The seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. The appearance of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. Moses entered into the midst of the cloud, and went up on the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. Chapter 25 The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they take an offering for me. From everyone whose heart makes him willing you shall take my offering. This is the offering which you shall take from them, gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, sea cow hides, acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, onyx stones, and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. Let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show you, the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all of its furniture, even so you shall make it. You shall make poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold. You shall put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry the ark. The poles shall be in the rings of the ark. They shall not be taken from it. You shall put the testimony which I shall give you into the ark. You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Three feet eight inches shall be its length, and two feet three inches its breadth. You shall make two cherubim of hammered gold. You shall make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at the one end, and one cherub at the other end. You shall make the cherubim on its two ends of one piece with the mercy seat. The cherubim shall spread out their wings upward, covering the mercy seat with their wings, with their faces toward one another. The faces of the cherubim shall be toward the mercy seat. You shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I will give you. There I will meet with you, and I will tell you from above the mercy seat from between the two cherubim which are on the ark of the testimony, all that I command you for the children of Israel. You shall make a table of acacia wood. Two feet eleven inches shall be its length, and eighteen inches its breadth, and two feet three inches its height. You shall overlay it with pure gold, and make a gold molding around it. You shall make a rim of a hand breadth around it. You shall make a golden molding on its rim around it. You shall make four rings of gold for it and put the rings in the four corners that are on its four legs. The rings shall be close to the rim, for places for the poles to carry the table. You shall make the poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold, that the table may be carried with them. You shall make its dishes, its spoons, its ladles, and its bowls to pour out offerings with. 
you shall make them of pure gold. You shall set bread of the presence on the table before me always. You shall make a lampstand of pure gold. Of hammered work shall the lampstand be made, even its base, its shaft, its cups, its buds, and its flowers, shall be of one piece with it. There shall be six branches going out of its sides, three branches of the lampstand out of its one side, and three branches of the lampstand out of its other side, three cups made like almond blossoms in one branch, a bud and a flower, and three cups made like almond blossoms in the other branch, a bud and a flower. So for the six branches going out of the lampstand, and in the lampstand four cups made like common blossoms, its buds and its flowers, and a bud under two branches of one piece with it, and a bud under two branches of one piece with it, and a bud under two branches of one piece with it, for the six branches going out of the lampstand. Their buds and their branches shall be of one piece with it, all of it one beaten work of pure gold. You shall make its lamps seven, and they shall light its lamps to give light to the space in front of it. Its snuffers and its snuff dishes shall be of pure gold. It shall be made of a talent of pure gold, with all these accessories. See that you make them after their pattern, which has been shown to you on the mountain. Chapter 26 Moreover you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains, of fine twine linen, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, with cherubim. The work of the skillful workmen you shall make them. The length of each curtain shall be forty-one feet four inches, and the breadth of each curtain five feet eleven inches, all the curtains shall have one measure. Five curtains shall be coupled together one to another, and the other five curtains shall be coupled one to another. You shall make loops of blue on the edge of the one curtain from the edge in the coupling, and likewise you shall make in the edge of the curtain that is outmost in the second coupling. You shall make fifty loops in the one curtain, and you shall make fifty loops in the edge of the curtain that is in the second coupling. The loops shall be opposite one to another. You shall make fifty clasps of gold, and couple the curtains one to another with the clasps, and the tabernacle shall be a unit. You shall make curtains of goat's hair for a covering over the tabernacle. You shall make them eleven curtains. The length of each curtain shall be forty four feet four inches, and the breadth of each curtain five feet eleven inches. The eleven curtains shall have one measure. You shall couple five curtains by themselves, and six curtains by themselves and shall double over the sixth curtain in the forefront of the tent. You shall make fifty loops on the edge of the one curtain that is outmost in the coupling, and fifty loops on the edge of the curtain which is outmost in the second coupling. You shall make fifty clasps of bronze, and put the clasps into the loops, and couple the tent together, that it may be one. The overhanging part that remains of the curtains of the tent, the half curtain that remains, shall hang over the back of the tabernacle. 18 inches on the one side, and 18 inches on the other side, of that which remains in the length of the curtains of the tent, shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle on this side and on that side, to cover it. You shall make a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red, and a covering of sea cow hides above. You shall make the boards for the tabernacle of acacia wood, standing up. 17 feet 3 inches shall be the length of a board, and 2 feet 3 inches the breadth of each board. There shall be two tenons in each board, joined to one another, thus you shall make for all the boards of the tabernacle. You shall make the boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side southward. You shall make forty sockets of silver under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for its two tenons, and two sockets under another board for its two tenons. For the second side of the tabernacle, on the north side, twenty boards, and there forty sockets of silver, two sockets under one board and two sockets under another board. For the far part of the tabernacle westward you shall make six boards. You shall make two boards for the corners of the tabernacle in the far part. They shall be double beneath, and in like manner they shall be entire to its top to one ring, thus shall it be for them both, they shall be for the two corners. There shall be eight boards, and their sockets of silver, sixteen sockets, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. You shall make bars of acacia wood five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the side of the tabernacle, for the far part westward. The middle bar in the midst of the board shall pass through from end to end. You shall overlay the boards with gold, and make their rings of gold for places for the bars, and you shall overlay the bars with gold. You shall set up the tabernacle according to the way that it was shown to you on the mountain. You shall make a veil of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen, with cherubim. 
The work of a skillful workman shall it be made. You shall hang it on four pillars of acacia overlaid with gold, their hooks shall be of gold, on four sockets of silver. You shall hang up the veil under the clasps, and shall bring the ark of the testimony in there within the veil, and the veil shall separate the holy place from the most holy for you. You shall put the mercy seat on the ark of the testimony in the most holy place. You shall set the table outside the veil, and the lamp stand over against the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south and you shall put the table on the north side. You shall make a screen for the door of the tent, of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen, the work of the embroiderer. You shall make for the screen five pillars of acacia, and overlay them with gold, their hooks shall be of gold, and you shall cast five sockets of bronze for them. Chapter 27 You shall make the altar of acacia wood, eight feet seven inches long, and eight feet seven inches broad. The altar shall be four square, and its height shall be five feet two inches. You shall make its horns on its four corners, its horns shall be of one piece with it, and you shall overlay it with bronze. You shall make its pots to take away its ashes, its shovels, its basins, its flesh hooks, and its fire pans, all its vessels you shall make of bronze. You shall make a grating for it of network of bronze, and on the net you shall make four bronze rings in its four corners. You shall put it under the ledge around the altar beneath, that the net may reach halfway up the altar. You shall make poles for the altar, poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with bronze. Its poles shall be put into the rings, and the poles shall be on the two sides of the altar, when carrying it. You shall make it with hollow planks. They shall make it as it has been shown you on the mountain. You shall make the court of the tabernacle, for the south side southward there shall be hangings for the court of fine twine linen 172 feet 3 inches long for one side, and its pillars shall be 34 feet 5 inches, and their sockets 20, of bronze, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets shall be of silver. Likewise for the north side in length there shall be hangings 172 feet 3 inches, and its pillars 34 feet 5 inches, and their sockets 34 feet 5 inches, of bronze, the hooks of the pillars, and their fillets, of silver. For the breadth of the court on the west side shall be hangings of 86 feet 1 inch, their pillars 17 feet 3 inches, and their sockets 17 feet 3 inches. The breadth of the court on the east side eastward shall be 86 feet 1 inch. The hangings for the one side of the gate shall be 25 feet 10 inches, their pillars 5 feet 2 inches, and their sockets 5 feet 2 inches. For the other side shall be hangings of 25 feet 10 inches their pillars 5 feet 2 inches, and their sockets 5 feet 2 inches. For the gate of the court shall be a screen of 34 feet 5 inches, of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen, the work of the embroiderer, their pillars 6 feet 11 inches, and their sockets 6 feet 11 inches. All the pillars of the court around shall be filleted with silver, their hooks of silver, and their sockets of bronze. The length of the court shall be 172 feet 3 inches and the breadth 86 feet 1 inch everywhere, and the height 8 feet 7 inches, of fine twined linen, and their sockets of bronze. All the instruments of the tabernacle in all its service, and all its pins, and all the pins of the court, shall be of bronze. You shall command the children of Israel, that they bring to you pure olive oil beaten for the light, to cause the lamb to burn continually. In the tent of meeting, outside the veil which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall keep it in order from evening to morning before the Lord, it shall be a statute forever throughout their generations on the behalf of the children of Israel. Chapter 28 Bring Aaron your brother, and his sons with him, near to you from among the children of Israel, that he may minister to me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar and Edomar, Aaron's sons. You shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother, for glory and for beauty. You shall speak to all who are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they make Aaron's garments to sanctify him, that he may minister to me in the priest's office. These are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate, and an ephod, and a robe, and a coat of checker work, a turban, and a sash, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother, and his sons, that he may minister to me in the priest's office. They shall take the gold, and the blue, and the purple, and the scarlet, and the fine linen, they shall make the ephod of gold, of blue, and purple, scarlet, and fine twined linen, the work of the skillful workman. It shall have two shoulder straps joined to the two ends of it, that it may be joined together. The skillfully woven band, which is on it, that is on him, 
shall be like its work and of the same piece, of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen. You shall take two onyx stones, and engrave on them the names of the children of Israel, six of their names on the one stone, and the names of the six that remain on the other stone, in the order of their birth. With the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet, you shall engrave the two stones, according to the names of the children of Israel, you shall make them to be enclosed in settings of gold. You shall put the two stones on the shoulder straps of the ephod, to be stones of memorial for the children of Israel, and Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord on his two shoulders for a memorial. You shall make settings of gold, and two chains of pure gold, you shall make them like cords of braided work, and you shall put the braided chains on the settings. You shall make a breastplate of judgment, the work of the skillful workman, like the work of the ephod you shall make it, of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet and fine twined linen, you shall make it. It shall be square and folded double, a span shall be its length of it, and a span its breadth. You shall set in its settings of stones, four rows of stones, a row of ruby, topaz, and beryl shall be the first row, and the second row a turquoise, a sapphire, and an emerald, and the third row a jacinth, an agate, and an amethyst, and the fourth row a chrysolite, an onyx, and a jasper they shall be enclosed in gold in their settings. The stones shall be according to the names of the children of Israel, twelve, according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, everyone according to his name, they shall be for the twelve tribes. You shall make on the breastplate chains like cords, of braided work of pure gold. You shall make on the breastplate two rings of gold, and shall put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. You shall put the two braided chains of gold in the two rings at the ends of the breastplate. The other two ends of the two braided chains you shall put on the two settings, and put them on the shoulder straps of the ephod in its forepart. You shall make two rings of gold, and you shall put them on the two ends of the breastplate, on its edge, which is toward the side of the ephod inward. You shall make two rings of gold, and shall put them on the two shoulder straps of the ephod underneath, in its forepart, close by its coupling above the skillfully woven band of the ephod. They shall bind the breastplate by its rings to the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue, that it may be on the skillfully woven band of the ephod, and that the breastplate may not swing out from the ephod. Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel on the breastplate for judging over his heart, when he goes into the holy place, as a continual reminder before God. You are to put in the breastplate for judging the Urim and the Thummim, and they are to be over Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. And Aaron will carry the means to make decisions for the children of Israel over his heart before the Lord continually. You shall make the robe of the ephod all of blue. It shall have a hole for the head in its midst, it shall have a binding of woven work around its hole, as it were the hole of a coat of mill, that it not be torn. On its hem you shall make pomegranates of blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, around its hem, and bells of gold between and around them, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate, around the hem of the robe. It shall be on Aaron to minister, and its sound shall be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord, and when he comes out, that he not die. You shall make a plate of pure gold, and engrave on it, like the engravings of a signet, holy to the Lord. You shall put it on a lace of blue, and it shall be on the sash, on the front of the sash it shall be. It shall be on Aaron's forehead, and Aaron shall bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel shall make holy in all their holy gifts, and it shall be always on his forehead, that they may be accepted before the Lord. You shall weave the coat in checker work of fine linen, and you shall make a turban of fine linen, and you shall make a sash, the work of the embroiderer. You shall make coats for Aaron's sons, and you shall make sashes for them and you shall make headbands for them, for glory and for beauty. You shall put them on Aaron your brother, and on his sons with him, and shall anoint them, and consecrate them and sanctify them, that they may minister to me in the priest's office. You shall make them linen breeches to cover the flesh of their nakedness, from the waist even to the thighs they shall reach, they shall be on Aaron, and on his sons, when they go into the tent of meeting, or when they come near to the altar to minister in the holy place, that they do not bear iniquity, and die, it shall be a statute forever to him and to his descendants after him. Chapter 29 This is the thing that you shall do to them to make them holy to minister to me in the priest's office, take one young bull and two rams without blemish, unleavened bread, unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil, you shall make them of fine wheat flour. You shall put them into one basket, and bring them in the basket, with the bull and the two rams. 
You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tent of meeting, and shall wash them with water. You shall take the garments, and put on Aaron the coat, the robe of the ephod, the ephod, and the breastplate, and dress him with a skillfully woven band of the ephod, and you shall set the turban on his head, and put the holy crown on the turban. Then you shall take the anointing oil, and pour it on his head, and anoint him. You shall bring his sons, and put coats on them. You shall dress them with belts, Aaron and his sons, and bind headbands on them, and they shall have the priesthood by a perpetual statute, and you shall consecrate Aaron and his sons. You shall bring the bull before the tent of meeting, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the bull. You shall kill the bull before the Lord, at the door of the tent of meeting. You shall take of the blood of the bull, and put it on the horns of the altar with your finger and you shall pour out all the blood at the base of the altar. You shall take all the fat that covers the entrails, the cover of the liver, the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, and burn them on the altar. But the flesh of the bull, and its skin, and its dung, you shall burn with fire outside of the camp, it is a sin offering. You shall also take the one ram, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the ram. You shall kill the ram, and you shall take its blood and sprinkle it around on the altar. You shall cut the ram into its pieces, and wash its entrails, and its legs, and put them with its pieces, and with its head. You shall burn the whole ram on the altar, it is a burnt offering to the Lord, it is a pleasant aroma, an offering made by fire to the Lord. You shall take the other ram, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the ram. Then you shall kill the ram, and take some of its blood, and put it on the tip of the right ear of Aaron and on the tip of the right ear of his sons, and on the thumb of their right hand, and on the big toe of their right foot, and sprinkle the blood around on the altar. You shall take of the blood that is on the altar, and of the anointing oil, and sprinkle it on Aaron, and on his garments, and on his sons, and on the garments of his sons with him, and he shall be made holy, and his garments, and his sons, and his sons' garments with him. Also you shall take some of the ram's fat, the fat tail, the fat that covers the entrails, the cover of the liver, the two kidneys, the fat that is on them, and the right thigh, for it is a ram of consecration, and one loaf of bread, one cake of oiled bread, and one wafer out of the basket of unleavened bread that is before the Lord. You shall put all of this in Aaron's hands, and in his son's hands, and shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. You shall take them from their hands, and burn them on the altar on the burnt offering, for a pleasant aroma before the Lord. It is an offering made by fire to the Lord. You shall take the breast of Aaron's ram of consecration, and wave it for a wave offering before the Lord, and it shall be your portion. You shall sanctify the breast of the wave offering, and the thigh of the wave offering, which is waved, and which is heaved up, of the ram of consecration, even of that which is for Aaron, and of that which is for his sons, and it shall be for Aaron and his sons as their portion forever from the children of Israel, for it is a wave offering and it shall be a wave offering from the children of Israel of the sacrifices of their peace offerings, even their wave offering to the Lord. The holy garments of Aaron shall be for his sons after him, to be anointed in them, and to be consecrated in them. Seven days shall the son who is priest in his place put them on, when he comes into the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place. You shall take the ram of consecration, and boil its flesh in a holy place. Aaron and his sons shall eat the flesh of the ram, and the bread that is in the basket at the door of the tent of meeting. They shall eat those things with which atonement was made, to consecrate and sanctify them, but a stranger shall not eat of it, because they are holy. If anything of the flesh of the consecration, or of the bread, remains to the morning, then you shall burn the remainder with fire, it shall not be eaten, because it is holy. You shall do so to Aaron, and to his sons, according to all that I have commanded you. You shall consecrate them seven days. Every day you shall offer the bowl of sin offering for atonement, and you shall cleanse the altar, when you make atonement for it, and you shall anoint it, to sanctify it. Seven days you shall make atonement for the altar, and sanctify it, and the altar shall be most holy, whatever touches the altar shall be holy. Now this is that which you shall offer on the altar, two lambs a year old day by day continually, a continual burnt offering. The one lamb you shall offer in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer at evening and with the one lamb a tenth part of an ephah of fine flour mixed with the fourth part of a hin of beaten oil, and the fourth part of a hin of wine for a drink offering. The other lamb you shall offer at evening, and shall do to it according to the meal offering of the morning, and according to its drink offering, for a pleasant aroma, an offering made by fire to the Lord.
it shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the door of the tent of meeting before the Lord, where I will meet with you, to speak there to you. There I will meet with the children of Israel, and the place shall be sanctified by my glory. I will sanctify the tent of meeting in the altar, Aaron also and his sons I will sanctify, to minister to me in the priest's office. I will dwell among the children of Israel, and will be their God. They shall know that I am the Lord their God, who brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them, I am the Lord their God. Chapter 30. You shall make an altar to burn incense on. You shall make it of acacia wood. Its length shall be at twenty-one inches, and its breadth twenty-one inches. It shall be square, and its height shall be three feet five inches. You shall overlay it with pure gold, its top its sides around it, and its horns, and you shall make a gold molding around it. You shall make two golden rings for it under its molding, on its two ribs, on its two sides you shall make them, and they shall be for places for poles with which to bear it. You shall make the poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold. You shall put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with you. Aaron shall burn incense of sweet spices on it every morning. When he tends the lamps, he shall burn it. When Aaron lights the lamps at evening, he shall burn it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall offer no strange incense on it, nor burnt offering, nor meal offering, and you shall pour no drink offering on it. Aaron shall make atonement on its horns once in the year, with the blood of the sin offering of atonement once in the year he shall make atonement for it throughout your generations. It is most holy to the Lord. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, when you take a census of the children of Israel, according to those who are numbered among them, then each man shall give a ransom for his soul to the Lord, when you number them, that there be no plague among them when you number them. They shall give this, everyone who passes over to those who are numbered, half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. The shekel is twenty jeraz, half a shekel for an offering to the Lord. Everyone who passes over to those who are numbered, from twenty years old and upward, shall give the offering to the Lord. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less, than the half shekel, when they give the offering of the Lord, to make atonement for your souls. You shall take the atonement money from the children of Israel, and shall appoint it for the service of the tent of meeting, that it may be a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord, to make atonement for your souls. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, You shall also make a basin of bronze, and its base of bronze, in which to wash. You shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it. Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet in it. When they go into the tent of meeting, they shall wash with water, that they not die, or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn an offering made by fire to the Lord. So they shall wash their hands and their feet, that they not die, and it shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his descendants throughout their generations. Moreover the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, also take fine spices, of liquid myrrh, five hundred shekels, and a fragrant cinnamon half as much, even two hundred and fifty, and a fragrant cane, two hundred and fifty, and of cash of five hundred, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and a hin of olive oil. You shall make it a holy anointing oil, a perfume compounded after the art of the perfumer, it shall be a holy anointing oil. You shall use it to anoint the tent of meeting, the ark of the testimony, the table and all its articles the lampstand and its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the basin with its base. You shall sanctify them, that they may be most holy. Whatever touches them shall be holy. You shall anoint Aaron and his sons, and sanctify them, that they may minister to me in the priest's office. You shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil to me throughout your generations. It shall not be poured on man's flesh, neither shall you make any like it according to its composition, it is holy. It shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds any like it, or whoever puts any of it on a stranger, he shall be cut off from his people. The Lord said to Moses, Take to yourself sweet spices, gum resin, and onicha, and galbanum, sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each shall there be an equal weight, and you shall make incense of it, a perfume after the art of the perfumer, seasoned with salt, pure and holy, and you shall beat some of it very small and put some of it before the testimony in the tent of meeting, where I will meet with you. It shall be to you most holy. The incense which you shall make, according to its composition you shall not make for yourselves, it shall be to you holy for the Lord. 
Whoever shall make any like that, to smell of it, he shall be cut off from his people. Chapter 31 The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Look, I have called by name Bezalel the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, and in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to devise skillful works, to work in gold, and in silver, and in bronze, and in cutting of stones for setting, and in carving of wood, to work in all manner of workmanship. I, look, I have appointed with him Aholiab, the son of Ahusamach, of the tribe of Dan, and in the heart of all who are wise-hearted I have put wisdom, that they may make all that I have commanded you, the tent of meeting, the ark of the testimony, the mercy seat that is on it, all the furniture of the tent, the table and its vessels, the pure lampstand with all its vessels, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all its vessels, the basin and its base, the finely worked garments the holy garments for Aaron the priest the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office, the anointing oil, and the incense of sweet spices for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded you they shall do. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Most certainly you shall keep my Sabbaths, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. You shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it shall surely be put to death, for whoever does any work in it, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall surely be put to death. Therefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations, for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested, and was refreshed. He gave to Moses, when he finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, the two tablets of the testimony, stone tablets, written by the finger of God. Chapter 32 When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron, and said to him, Come, make us gods, which shall go before us, for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the golden rings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them to me. All the people took off the golden rings which were in their ears, and brought them to Aaron. He received what they handed him, and fashioned it with an engraving thule, and made it a molten calf, and they said, These are your gods, Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation, and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. They rose up early on the next day, and offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and to drink, and rose up to play. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Go down at once, for your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, and look, they are a stiff-necked people. Now therefore leave me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. Moses pleaded with the Lord his God, and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, that you have brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians speak, saying, He brought them forth for evil, to kill them in the mountains, and to consume them from the surface of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, and reap in of this evil against your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self, and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the sky, and all this land that I have spoken of I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. The Lord changed his mind about the disaster which he said he would do to his people. Moses turned, and went down from the mountain, with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand tablets that were written on both their sides, on the one side and on the other they were written. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, engraved on the tables. When Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, There is the noise of war in the camp. He said, 
It isn't the voice of those who shout for victory, neither is it the voice of those who cry for being overcome, but the noise of those who sing that I hear. It happened, as soon as he came near to the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger grew hot, and he threw the tablets out of his hands, and broke them beneath the mountain. He took the calf which they had made, and burned it with fire, ground it to powder, and scattered it on the water, and made the children of Israel drink of it. Moses said to Aaron, What did these people do to you, that you have brought a great sin on them? Aaron said, Do not let the anger of my Lord grow hot. You know the people, that they are set on evil. For they said to me, Make us gods, which shall go before us, for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. I said to them, Whoever has any gold, let them take it off, so they gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. When Moses saw that the people had broken loose, for Aaron had let them loose for a derision among their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp, and said, Whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. All the sons of Levi gathered themselves together to him. He said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Every man put his sword on his thigh, and go back and forth from gate to gate throughout the camp, and every man kill his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. The sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. And Moses said, You have been consecrated today to the Lord, each one at the cost of his son and of his brother, so he has given a blessing to you this day. It happened on the next day, that Moses said to the people, You have committed a great sin. And now I will go up to God. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Moses returned to the Lord, and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made themselves gods of gold. Yet now, if you will, forgive their sin and if not, please blot me out of your book which you have written. The Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Now go, lead the people to the place of which I have spoken to you. Look, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless in the day when I punish, I will punish them for their sin. The Lord struck the people, because they made the calf, which Aaron made. Chapter 33. The Lord spoke to Moses, Depart, go up from here, you and the people that you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of you for you are a stiff-necked people, lest I consume you in the way. When the people heard this evil news, they mourned, and no one put on his jewelry. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the children of Israel, You are a stiff-necked people. If I were to go up into your midst for one moment, I would consume you. Therefore now take off your jewelry from you, that I may know what to do to you. The children of Israel stripped themselves of their jewelry from Mount Horeb onward. Now Moses used to take the tent and to pitch it outside the camp, far away from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. It happened that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. It happened that when Moses went out to the tent, that all the people rose up, and stood, everyone at their tent door, and watched Moses, until he had gone into the tent. It happened, when Moses entered into the tent, that the pillar of cloud descended, stood at the door of the tent, and spoke with Moses. All the people saw the pillar of cloud stand at the door of the tent, and all the people rose up and worshipped, everyone at their tent door. The Lord spoke to Moses face to face, as a man speaks to his friend. He turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart out of the tent. Moses said to the Lord, Look, you tell me, bring up this people, and you haven't let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name and you have also found favor in my sight. Now therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways, that I may know you, so that I may find favor in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. He said to him, If your presence doesn't go with me, do not carry us up from here. For how would people know that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Isn't it in that you go with us, so that we are separated, I and your people, from all the people who are on the surface of the earth? The Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also that you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight, 
and I know you by name. He said, Please show me your glory. He said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. He said, You cannot see my face, for man may not see me and live. The Lord also said, Look, there is a place by me, and you are to station yourself on the rock. It will happen, while my glory passes by, that I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and will cover you with my hand until I have passed by, then I will take away my hand, and you will see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Chapter 34 The Lord said to Moses, Chisel two stone tablets like the first, and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke. Be ready by the morning, and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, and station yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. No one shall come up with you, neither let anyone be seen throughout all the mountain, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mountain. He chiseled two tablets of stone like the first, and Moses rose up early in the morning, and went up to Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand two stone tablets. The Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger, and abundant in loving kindness and truth, keeping loving kindness for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear, the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, and upon the children's children, upon the third and upon the fourth, generation. Moses hurried and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. He said, If now I have found favor in your sight, Lord, please let the Lord go in the midst of us, although this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. He said, Look, I make a covenant, before all your people I will do marvels, such as have not been worked in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among which you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I do with you. Observe that which I command you this day. Look, I drive out before you the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Be careful, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, lest it be for a snare in the midst of you, but you shall break down their altars, and dash in pieces their pillars, and you shall cut down their Asherim, for you shall worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, lest they play the prostitute after their gods, and sacrifice to their gods, and one call you and you eat of his sacrifice, and you take of their daughters to your sons, and their daughters play the prostitute after their gods, and make your sons play the prostitute after their gods. You shall make no cast idols for yourselves. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, as I commanded you, at the time appointed in the month Abib for in the month of Bibu came out from Egypt. All that opens the womb is mine, and all your livestock that is male, the firstborn of cow and sheep. The firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, and if you will not redeem it, then you shall break its neck. All the firstborn of your sons you shall redeem. No one shall appear before me empty. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest, in plowing time and in harvest you shall rest. You shall observe the feast of weeks with the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of harvest at the year's end. Three times in the year all your males shall appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. For I will drive out nations before you and enlarge your borders, neither shall any man desire your land when you go up to appear before the Lord, your God, three times in the year. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left to the morning. You shall bring the first of the first fruits of your ground to the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. The Lord said to Moses, Write you these words, for in accordance with these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. He was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights, he neither ate bread, nor drank water. He wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. It happened. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone by reason of his speaking with him. When Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, look, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, 
and Moses spoke to them. Afterward all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them all of the commandments that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses was done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off, until he came out, and he came out, and spoke to the children of Israel that which he was commanded. The children of Israel saw Moses' face, that the skin of Moses' face shone, and Moses put the veil on his face again, until he went in to speak with him. Chapter 35 Moses assembled all the congregation of the children of Israel, and said to them, These are the words which the Lord has commanded, that you should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be a holy day for you, a Sabbath of solemn rest to the Lord, whoever does any work in it shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations on the Sabbath day. Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, the Lord's offering, gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, sea cow hides, acacia wood, oil for the light spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, onyx stones, and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. Let every wise-hearted man among you come, and make all that the Lord has commanded, the tabernacle, its outer covering, its roof, its clasps, its boards, its bars, its pillars, and its sockets, the ark, and its poles, the mercy seat, the curtain to screen it, the table with its poles and all its vessels, and the show bread the lampstand also for the light, with its vessels, its lamps, and the oil for the light, and the altar of incense with its poles, the anointing oil, the sweet incense, the screen for the door, at the door of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering, with its grating of bronze, its poles, and all its vessels, the basin and its base, the hangings of the court, its pillars, their sockets, and the screen for the gate of the court, the pins of the tabernacle, the pins of the court, and their cords, the finely worked garments, for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons, to minister in the priest's office. All the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. They came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing, and brought the Lord's offering, for the work of the tent of meeting, and for all of its service, and for the holy garments. They came, both men and women, as many as were willing-hearted, and brought brooches, earrings, signet rings, and armlets, all jewels of gold, even every man who offered an offering of gold to the Lord. Everyone, with whom was found blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, and sea cow hides, brought them. Everyone who did offer an offering of silver and bronze brought the Lord's offering, and everyone, with whom was found acacia wood for any work of the service, brought it. All the women who were wise-hearted spun with their hands, and brought that which they had spun, the blue, the purple, the scarlet, and the fine linen. All the women whose heart stirred them up in wisdom spun the goat's hair. And the leaders brought the onyx stones, and the stones to be set, for the ephod and for the breastplate, and the spice, and the oil for the light, for the anointing oil, and for the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a free will offering to the Lord, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all the work, which the Lord had commanded to be made by Moses. Moses said to the children of Israel, Look, God has called by name Bezalel the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He has filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, and to make skillful works, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cutting of stones for setting, and in carving of wood to work in all kinds of skillful workmanship. He has put in his heart that he may teach, both he, and Aholiab, the son of Ahusamach, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with wisdom of heart, to work all manner of workmanship, of the engraver, of the skillful workman, and of the embroiderer, in blue, in purple, in scarlet, and in fine linen, and of the weaver, even of those who do any workmanship, and of those who make skillful works. Chapter 36 Betzalel and Aholiab shall work with every wise-hearted man, in whom the Lord has put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all the work for the service of the sanctuary, according to all that the Lord has commanded. Moses called Betzalel and Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man, 
in whose heart God had put wisdom, even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come to the work to do it, and they received from Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary, with which to make it. They brought yet to him freewill offerings every morning. All the wise men, who performed all the work of the sanctuary, each came from his work which they did. They spoke to Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. Moses gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make anything else for the offering for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing, for the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and too much. All the wise-hearted men among those who did the work made the tabernacle with ten curtains, of fine twine linen, blue, purple, and scarlet, with cherubim, the work of the skillful workmen, they made them. The length of each curtain was forty-eight feet three inches, and the breadth of each curtain six feet eleven inches. All the curtains were the same size. He coupled five curtains to one another, and the other five curtains he coupled one to another. He made loops of blue on the edge of the one curtain from the edge in the coupling. Likewise he made in the edge of the curtain that was outmost in the second coupling. He made fifty loops in the one curtain, and he made fifty loops in the edge of the curtain that was in the second coupling. The loops were opposite one to another. He made fifty clasps of gold, and coupled the curtains one to another with the clasps, so the tabernacle was a unit. He made curtains of goat's hair for a covering over the tabernacle. He made them eleven curtains. The length of each curtain was fifty-one feet eight inches, and six feet eleven inches the breadth of each curtain. The eleven curtains were the same size. He coupled five curtains by themselves, and six curtains by themselves. He made fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that was outmost in the coupling, and he made fifty loops on the edge of the curtain which was outmost in the second coupling. He made fifty clasps of bronze to couple the tent together, that it might be a unit. He made a covering for the tent of ram's skins dyed red, and a covering of sea cow hides above. He made the boards for the tabernacle of acacia wood, standing up. Seventeen feet three inches was the length of a board, and two feet seven inches the breadth of each board. Each board had two tenons, joined one to another. He made all the boards of the tabernacle this way. He made the boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side southward. He made forty sockets of silver under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for its two tenons, and two sockets under another board for its two tenons. For the second side of the tabernacle, on the north side, he made twenty boards, and there forty sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. For the far part of the tabernacle westward he made six boards. He made two boards for the corners of the tabernacle in the far part, they were doubled beneath, and in like manner they were all the way to its top to one ring. He did thus to both of them in the two corners. There were eight boards, and their sockets of silver, sixteen sockets, under every board two sockets. He made bars of acacia wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle for the hinder part westward. He made the middle bar to pass through in the midst of the boards from the one end to the other. He overlaid the boards with gold, and made their rings of gold for places for the bars, and overlaid the bars with gold. He made the veil of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twined linen, with cherubim. He made it the work of a skillful workman. He made four pillars of acacia for it, and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold. He cast four sockets of silver for them. He made a screen for the door of the tent, of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twined linen, the work of an embroiderer, and the five pillars of it with their hooks. He overlaid their capitals and their fillets with gold, and their five sockets were of bronze. Chapter 37 But Salel made the ark of acacia wood. Its length was four feet four inches, and its breadth two feet seven inches, and two feet seven inches its height. He overlaid it with pure gold inside and outside, and made a molding of gold for it around it. He cast four rings of gold for it, in its four feet, even two rings on its one side, and two rings on its other side. He made poles of acacia wood, and overlaid them with gold. He put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark, to bear the ark. He made a mercy seat of pure gold. Its length was four feet four inches, and two feet seven inches, its breadth. He made two cherubim of gold. He made them of beaten work, at the two ends of the mercy seat, one cherub at the one end, and one cherub at the other end. 
He made the cherubim of one piece with the mercy seat at its two ends. The cherubim spread out their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, with their faces toward one another. The faces of the cherubim were toward the mercy seat. He made the table of acacia wood. Its length was three feet five inches, and its breadth was twenty-one inches, and its height was two feet seven inches. He overlaid it with pure gold, and made a gold molding around it. He made a border of a handbreadth around it, and made a golden molding on its border around it. He cast four rings of gold for it, and put the rings in the four corners that were on its four feet. The rings were close by the border, the places for the poles to carry the table. He made the poles of acacia wood, and overlaid them with gold, to carry the table. He made the vessels which were on the table, its dishes, its spoons, its bowls, and its pitchers with which to pour out, of pure gold. He made the lampstand of pure gold. He made the lampstand of beaten work. Its base, its shaft, its cups, its buds, and its flowers were of one piece with it. There were six branches going out of its sides three branches of the lampstand out of its one side, and three branches of the lampstand out of its other side, three cups made like almond blossoms in one branch, a bud and a flower, and three cups made like almond blossoms in the other branch, a bud and a flower, so for the six branches going out of the lampstand. In the lampstand were four cups made like almond blossoms, its buds and its flowers, and a bud under two branches of one piece with it, and a bud under two branches of one piece with it and a bud under two branches of one piece with it, for the six branches going out of it. Their buds and their branches were of one piece with it. The whole thing was one beaten work of pure gold. He made its seven lamps, and its snuffers, and its snuff dishes, of pure gold. He made it of a talent of pure gold, with all its vessels. He made the altar of incense of acacia wood. It was square, its length was twenty-one inches, and its breadth twenty-one inches. Its height was three feet five inches. Its horns were of one piece with it. He overlaid it with pure gold, its top, its sides around it, and its horns. He made a gold molding around it. He made two golden rings for it under its molding crown, on its two ribs, on its two sides, for places for poles with which to carry it. He made the poles of acacia wood, and overlaid them with gold. He made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of sweet spices, after the art of the perfumer. Chapter 38 he made the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood. It was square. Its length was 8 feet 7 inches, its breadth was 8 feet 7 inches, and its height was 5 feet 2 inches. He made its horns on its four corners. Its horns were of one piece with it, and he overlaid it with bronze. He made all the vessels of the altar, the pots, the shovels, the basins, the forks, and the fire pans. He made all its vessels of bronze. He made for the altar a grating of a network of bronze, under the ledge around it beneath, reaching halfway up. He cast four rings for the four ends of bronze grating, to be places for the poles. He made the poles of acacia wood, and overlaid them with bronze. He put the poles into the rings on the sides of the altar, with which to carry it. He made it hollow with planks. He made the basin of bronze, and its base of bronze, out of the mirrors of the ministering women who ministered at the door of the tent of meeting. He made the court, for the south side southward the hangings of the court were of fine twined linen, 172 feet 3 inches, their pillars were 34 feet 5 inches, and their sockets 34 feet 5 inches, of bronze, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. For the north side 172 feet 3 inches, their pillars 34 feet 5 inches, and their sockets 34 feet 5 inches, of bronze, the hooks of the pillars, and their fillets, of silver. For the west side were hangings of 86 feet 1 inch, their pillars 17 feet 3 inches, and their sockets 17 feet 3 inches, the hooks of the pillars, and their fillets, of silver. For the east side eastward 86 feet 1 inch. The hangings for the one side were 25 feet 10 inches, their pillars 5 feet 2 inches, and their sockets 5 feet 2 inches, and so for the other side. On this hand and that hand by the gate of the court were hangings of 25 feet 10 inches, their pillars 5 feet 2 inches, and their sockets 5 feet 2 inches. All the hangings around the court were of fine twined linen. The sockets for the pillars were of bronze. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver, and the overlaying of their capitals, of silver, and all the pillars of the court were filleted with silver. The screen for the gate of the court was the work of the embroiderer, of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twined linen. 
34 feet 5 inches was the length, and the height and the breadth was 8 feet 7 inches, like to the hangings of the court, their pillars were 6 feet 11 inches, and their sockets 6 feet 11 inches, of bronze, their hooks of silver, and the overlaying of their capitals, and their fillets, of silver. All the pins of the tabernacle, and around the court, were of bronze. This is the amount of material used for the tabernacle, even the tabernacle of the testimony, as they were counted, according to the commandment of Moses, for the service of the Levites, by the hand of Edomar, the son of Aaron the priest. But Salel the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord commanded Moses. With him was Aholiab, the son of Ahusamach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver, and a skillful workman, and an embroiderer in blue, in purple, in scarlet, and in fine linen. All the gold that was used for the work and all the work of the sanctuary, even the gold of the offering, was twenty-nine talents, and seven hundred thirty shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary. The silver of those who were numbered of the congregation was one hundred talents, and one thousand seven hundred seventy-five shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, a becca a head, that is, half a shekel, after the shekel of the sanctuary, for everyone who passed over to those who were numbered, from twenty years old and upward, for six hundred three thousand five hundred fifty men. The one hundred talents of silver were for casting the sockets of the sanctuary, and the sockets of the veil, one hundred sockets for the one hundred talents, a talent for a socket. Of the one thousand seven hundred seventy-five shekels he made hooks for the pillars, overlaid their capitals, and made fillets for them. The bronze of the offering was seventy talents, and two thousand four hundred shekels. With this he made the sockets to the door of the tent of meeting, the bronze altar, the bronze grating for it, all the vessels of the altar, the sockets around the court, the sockets of the gate of the court, all the pins of the tabernacle, and all the pins around the court. Chapter 39. Of the blue, purple, and scarlet, they made finely worked garments, for ministering in the holy place, and made the holy garments for Aaron, as the Lord commanded Moses. He made the effort of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twined linen. They beat the gold into thin plates, and cut it into wires, to work it in the blue, in the purple, in the scarlet, and in the fine linen, the work of the skillful workmen. They made shoulder straps for it, joined together, at the two ends it was joined together. The skillfully woven band that was on it, with which to fasten it on, was of the same piece, like its work, of gold, of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twined linen, as the Lord commanded Moses. They worked the onyx stones, enclosed in settings of gold, engraved with the engravings of a signet, according to the names of the children of Israel. He put them on the shoulder straps of the ephod, to be stones of memorial for the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses. He made the breastplate, the work of a skillful workman, like the work of the ephod, of gold, of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twined linen. It was square. They made the breastplate double. Its length was a span, and its breadth a span, being double. They set in it four rows of stones. A row of ruby, topaz, and beryl was the first row, and the second row, a turquoise, a sapphire, and an emerald, and the third row, a jacinth, an agate, and an amethyst, and the fourth row, a chrysolite, an onyx, and a jasper. They were enclosed in gold settings. The stones were according to the names of the children of Israel, twelve, according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, everyone according to his name for the twelve tribes. They made on the breastplate chains like cords, of braided work of pure gold. They made two settings of gold, and two gold rings, and put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. They put the two braided chains of gold in the two rings at the ends of the breastplate. The other two ends of the two braided chains they put on the two settings, and put them on the shoulder straps of the ephod, in its front. They made two rings of gold, and put them on the two ends of the breastplate, on its edge, which was toward the side of the ephod inward. They made two rings of gold, and put them on the two shoulder straps of the ephod underneath, in its front, close by its coupling, above the skillfully woven band of the ephod. They bound the breastplate by its rings to the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue, that it might be on the skillfully woven band of the ephod, and that the breastplate might not come loose from the ephod, as the Lord commanded Moses. He made the robe of the ephod of woven work all of blue. The opening of the robe in its midst was like the opening of a coat of mail, with a binding around its opening, that it should not be torn. They made on the skirts of the robe pomegranates of blue, purple, 
scarlet, and twine linen. They made bells of pure gold, and put the bells between the pomegranates around the skirts of the robe, between the pomegranates, a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, around the skirts of the robe, to minister in. As the Lord commanded Moses, they made the coats of fine linen of woven work for Aaron, and for his sons, and the turban of fine linen, and the linen headbands of fine linen, and the linen breeches of fine twined linen, and the sash of fine twined linen, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, the work of the embroiderer, as the Lord commanded Moses. They made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold, and wrote on it a writing, like the engravings of a signet, holy to the Lord. They tied to it a lace of blue to fasten it on the turban above, as the Lord commanded Moses. Thus all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting was finished. The children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so they did. They brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent, with all its furniture, its clasps, its boards, its bars, its pillars, its sockets, the covering of ram skins dyed red, the covering of sea cow hides, the veil of the screen, the ark of the testimony with its poles the mercy seat, the table, all its vessels, the showbread, the pure lampstand, its lamps, even the lamps to be set in order, all its vessels, the oil for the light, the golden altar, the anointing oil, the sweet incense, the screen for the door of the tent, the bronze altar, its grating of bronze, its poles, all of its vessels, the basin and its base, the hangings of the court, its pillars, its sockets, the screen for the gate of the court, its cords, its pins, all the instruments of the service of the tabernacle, for the tent of meeting, the finely worked garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons, to minister in the priest's office. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did all the work. Moses saw all the work, and look, they had done it as the Lord had commanded, even so had they done it, and Moses blessed them. Chapter 40 the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month you shall raise up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall put the ark of the testimony in it, and you shall veil the ark with the curtain. You shall bring in the table, and set in order the things that are on it. You shall bring in the lampstand, and light its lamps. You shall set the golden altar for incense before the ark of the testimony, and put the screen of the door to the tabernacle. You shall set the altar of burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar, and shall put water in it. You shall set up the court around it, and hang up the screen of the gate of the court. You shall take the anointing oil, and anoint the tabernacle, and all that is in it, and shall make it holy, and all its furniture, and it will be holy. You shall anoint the altar of burnt offering, with all its vessels, and sanctify the altar, and the altar will be most holy. You shall anoint the basin at its base, and sanctify it. You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tent of meeting, and shall wash them with water. You shall put on Aaron the holy garments, and you shall anoint him, and sanctify him, that he may minister to me in the priest's office. You shall bring his sons, and put coats on them. You shall anoint them, as you anointed their father, that they may minister to me in the priest's office. Their anointing shall be to them for an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Moses did so, according to all that the Lord commanded him, so he did. It happened in the first month in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was set up. And Moses erected the tabernacle, and put its sockets in place, and set up its hooks and its boards, and put in its bars, and he erected its pillars. He spread the covering over the tent, and put the roof of the tabernacle above on it, as the Lord commanded Moses. He took and put the testimony into the ark, and set the poles on the ark, and put the mercy seat above on the ark. He brought the ark into the tabernacle, and set up the curtain as the screen, and concealed the ark of the testimony, as the Lord commanded Moses. He put the table in the tent of meeting, on the side of the tabernacle northward, outside of the veil. He set the bread in order on it before the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. He put the lampstand in the tent of meeting, opposite the table, on the side of the tabernacle southward. He lit the lamps before the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. He put the golden altar in the tent of meeting before the veil, and he burnt incense of sweet spices on it, as the Lord commanded Moses. He put up the screen of the door to the tabernacle. He set the altar of burnt offering at the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and offered on it the burnt offering and the meal offering, 
as the Lord commanded Moses, he set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar, and put water in it, with which to wash. Moses, Aaron, and his sons washed their hands and their feet there. When they went into the tent of meeting, and when they came near to the altar, they washed, as the Lord commanded Moses. He raised up the court around the tabernacle and the altar, and set up the screen of the gate of the court. So Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses wasn't able to enter into the tent of meeting, because the cloud stayed on it, and the Lord's glory filled the tabernacle. When the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward, throughout all their journeys, but if the cloud wasn't taken up, then they did not travel until the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and there was fire in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel, throughout all their journeys.